How's it going, guys? Okay, so in this tutorial, what I want to show you guys is how to interface several Docker containers that are running. Um, and by interface, I mean have them talk to each other or have the host talk to each of them. Um, I think in a lot of environments, you might have instances where you, um, you use a container to provide a single service, um, such as, you know, maybe your database is the Mongo container, or maybe you have uh, a web server set up in some other container, or um, uh, a proxy service in some container, or uh, caching or something, I don't know. Um, but there's a, there's a myriad of different services that each container could provide. And the key here is how do we get those containers to talk to each other? How do we, add, how do we from one container make a, make a request to another container? And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So right now I am logged into a digital ocean droplet that is running Ubuntu and I have uh, Docker installed. Um, if I run docker list, you'll see it gives me back um, the columns for uh, potential docker containers. If I run docker images, same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand up a couple docker containers. We're going to put services in each of them, and then I'm going to show you how to talk from one to another. So why don't we start with um, setting up a... Uh, an Ubuntu, Ubuntu Docker container, and in that we'll put a service, a web server service. We'll use Nginx. So the command uh, to download the image and then run the container in the background is going to be docker run dash it dash d. We want Ubuntu, and I will run that, and that should download the image, run a container, and then detach from the container and let it just kind of sit in the background there. Okay, looking good. So if I list out Docker images, I should see Ubuntu. I do. If I list out Docker containers, I should see one. Up seven seconds, I do. All right, so we're going to log into that container. That is up and running. So we're going to use Docker exec IT. We're going to pass it the container name, and then we're going to run bash. Okay, we are logged into our Docker container here. Let's take a look around. Okay, standard Ubuntu instance. Um, so let's set up a service in this container. Let's set up um, a, a web server. So we're going to use Nginx as our example. So to do that, let's just update the uh, package manager. And then we will go ahead and install Nginx. Okay, looking good. Um, so to see if the web server's up, I'm going to curl localhost. Curl is not found. Let's install curl. Again, this is a new instance of Ubuntu, so it probably doesn't have Vim, curl, that sort of stuff. Let's try that again. We'll curl localhost. Okay, so nothing's standing up, so I guess uh, Nginx didn't stand anything up, so let's go ahead and do that. Service Nginx reload, and then service Nginx restart. So that should set up a server. Let's check it out. And it does. So this is, um, this is the welcome to Nginx page that gets uh, stood up, and that is on port 80. Um, okay, so now we have uh, we have a container that has a service. It's got a web server set up, so I'm going to log out of that. Um, all right, so we have container number one up, and it has a service running on it. Uh, it's got a web server um, being controlled by Nginx. 
Uh, let's do the same thing, but let's set up a different, um, let's set up uh, maybe a different service. So I'm gonna run another Docker, uh, uh, another container of Ubuntu in the background. So docker run dash t dash d Ubuntu See if it's there, it is there. So the one that's been up three minutes is the one that has Nginx. Let's log into our new one. Okay. Why don't we try something a little different in this one? Let's, let's install a node server. So I'm going to install node. Okay, so I guess it uses the term node.js instead of node. So that's fine. Looks like we have it installed. It's 4.2.6. Okay, so it uses the term node.js, not node. That's what was throwing me off. Um, okay, so it seems to be working. Let's go ahead and stand up a server. So let's install Express because I like to use Express. Express is a node.js web server framework. Okay, I have a sample file here. So vim app.js, vim's not installed, apt get install. Okay, this should set up a server on port 3000 that returns hello world. Let's see how that goes. Ah, seems to be working pretty well. Um, so that we have a way to set that up in the background, I'm gonna install a tool called uh, Forever. Okay, so I installed forever. I just had to change the uh, alias for Node.js to Node. Um, okay, so forever start. Okay, so that just um, started our, our uh, Node.js web server and it's gonna stand it up indefinitely in the background. So curl localhost. I'm expecting the hello world. 
curl's not installed, so apt get install curl. Okay, let's try that again. Curl. Cool. So we just curled the uh, Node.js server on port 3000 and it returned a hello world. So that looks good. Let's exit out of this container. Okay guys, so on the host computer, um, we have two containers. The 16 minute one is has a node, uh, sorry, has an Nginx web server on port 80. 12 minute one has a Node.js server on port 3000. So if I from the host wanted to make a request to, for instance, the node, um, the node server, how would I do that? Well, I'll show you. So we need to get the IP of that container. So I'm gonna do docker inspect, and I'm gonna pass it the container. So there's a public IP associated with that container, and that is this field here, IP address. So if you want to a better command for that, you could do docker inspect container, and then you can egrep, and then we'll pass it a regular expression that does something like And then we'll do not comma continue. Okay, so that is how that command is how you can get the, uh, the IP associated with your container. All right, so now that we have the IP, let's curl, curl the IP. Okay, so, um, Okay, so right now we're looking at the Node.js one, okay. So if I do curl, and then I pass, and I look for the, the Node.js IP. So actually there's nothing on port 80, but what if I do 3000? Oh, hello world. So using these IPs is basically how you can talk to the containers. Um, it's the same idea as if you were talking, like if this IP was remote, um, it just happens to not be remote. Instead, it represents a container. Um, so from within the host, once a, if, if a request is coming in from the host and we wanted to proxy it to a container, we could do that just by grabbing the container's IP address and then acting as if that's the origin. And then we can hit the port that we are concerned with. So let's do the same thing for our Nginx server. So let's grab the container of the Nginx and let's do that command that I just came up with. I'm expecting it to return our web page. So let's try that. And what port do we want to hit for the Nginx? port 80, and that should be the default, so I'll just omit that. Boom, we got our Nginx web server web page that came back to us. So from the host, we can easily talk to um, talk to these other containers. Uh, it's really easy. We can proxy request to these containers. If it was a database, we could connect to it. It's pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to show you a more advanced thing. Okay guys, so I just showed you how to talk to each container from the host computer, but you might have an instance where you want to talk, you want container one to be able to talk to container B. <laughs> container one to talk to container two. Um, and, and we'll do that. What we could do as an example is we could take, um, we could set up Node.js so that it makes a request to, or it proxies the request to the Nginx container, or we could set up the Nginx web server to proxy request to Node.js, but because that development is gonna to take too much time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log into one of the um, containers and I'm just gonna curl one of the other containers to show you that those connections are open and you can make those connections to each other. So let's list out the containers. Sorry. 
list out the containers I was logged in. All right, so the one that's been up longer is 23 minutes is the Nginx, and the one that's been up 19 minutes is the Node.js. So why don't we log into the Node.js container, and we'll make a request to the Nginx container. Okay, so again, we're in the Node.js container. You see app.js right there. And what you could do is you could set up this that it proxies requests to another container. I've done that before. I just, setting up a proxy in Node.js takes a little bit of time and it's kind of outside the scope of what I'm trying to do here. So I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna show the same thing using curl. So what was our IP for um, the Nginx container? I think, you know, I think, um, actually, let's, let's check that out again. So it was docker inspect. Okay, so that was our IP. Copy that. Log back into the Nginx container. Okay. So we are going to curl from the Nginx, sorry, from the, from the node container, the node.js container, we are going to curl the nginx container. So two containers talking to each other. So we put the IP in there, and again, it should default to port 80. And I'm expecting the nginx container to respond with um, the welcome to nginx HTML page, because we're hitting port 80 on that container. And there it is. So this is container to container interfacing. Again, we just use the IPs as, as we would any other um, origin and it works well. Um, so that is, I showed you guys how, to, how the host can talk to the containers, but I also showed you how the containers can talk to each other. So this is kind of how you can map together all your different services and I hope it is useful for your development going forward.